Hello there, I'm Thursday and welcome to Skyber Hacks. Today it's episode 3 of Bash Programming. And today we will talk about debugging. Debugging your big and growing Bash programs. So as you start off with just one file, one function, or not any functions, then you put that into one function, two functions, three functions, you split that off, uh, off to reusable code, you put that into libraries, you load them, you know, your program becomes a real program. It's large and you cannot just look at one screen and and uh, and guess or assume everything that's going on. So you need different strategies on how to debug your programs. And so I will show you here some of my, my strategies, the ways I, I look at bash programs when they work and don't work. Okay, so um, first off, we'll talk about editor, bash-x, x-trace, ps4, a variable and you sit in bash to give you extra information and then there is a bash debugger and uh, lastly there's shell check which is also really useful so first off the editor is your friend so let's see here is my friend um, and um, it can really really help me like simple things like of course I have set this up which um, shell check and some other integration here so I can get you know I have this underlying thing but you know, just really, really rudimentary things like indentation can be a, a big help. So, if I had like if h equals one, uh, then something. And but the indentation here is really, really strange, right? It indents like nineteen characters, and it should be two. I have two space indent. So obviously there's something wrong, right? And the closing if it's on that column. It's really, really odd. Um, and the reason, of course, is that I have two closing brackets and only one opening bracket. So if I remove one of them, the indentation immediately gets correct. So this is some really, really rudimentary editor support that is really, really helpful. Another thing that the editor helps you out with is, you know, if you have name and let's say that you just write like that, then all of a sudden you can spot that the closing F here, that's green. It looks like a string, but it shouldn't be a string, right? And so obviously there's something wrong with my command. Uh, and also if I do, if I indent this stuff, it's I can indent it at will. And my editor is set up in such a way that I can only indent, you know, there's one indent, indentation for, you know, whatever context I'm in. So clearly there's something wrong here. And the moment I close that string, then the indentation does the correct thing. And have the same behavior than that I would expect. So, even if you have just you know nothing set up like LSP or some other fancy coding editor, just that you have basic editor support can be really really helpful of spotting errors. Um, so the next tip is perhaps the most useful one. That's to start your program with bash x. So here I have a. Here I have a program called uh, foo sh. It's the one um, I thought we looked at. Foo sh. Did I miss I spell that? Okay, but a very simple one that we just saw. Uh, if I start that off with bash dash x, um, I get some debug that uh, you know it says h equals ten. I knew that, and then the if test that evaluates to. And it's also interesting to see the bash just removes the if. And then it, it gets this expression. You can see h is then uh, dereferenced, and you got the value of 10 there, and 10 equals 1. That's clearly not true, and therefore, name is not set to this phi string. Okay, so this is very, very useful. And this works out of the box. You don't need to you know, compile your program with some debug flags or do any instrumentation of sorts. You get, get this for any shell script in the world. Uh, you just type, you know, start it off with bash dash x, and you get all this really, really useful information. So, if we have a look at a more uh, advanced example, uh, I have a program called blue sh, and that has, um, let's say, just comment that out for a bit. You know, that has a, a function that loads some libraries, and that loads this library here, and loads this library, and this library here ca calls a function in the first library you know so it's you know really 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 advanced program right 
functions, libraries, different files going back and forth. And so if I now start this uh, blue sh and just run it like that, you can see it prints out hello from green, hello from orange, and I have no idea how that happened. You know, what, what was it that made this work? So then I can start it off with bash dash x, and I get a lot more information. I can say, I set these um, shell built-ins. So this is error exit, it's the first error it will exit. Uh, it will also exit if there's any unset variables. I've uh, referred to a, a variable called name, and name hasn't been defined anywhere, then it will fail. And then pipe fail as well, if there's a pipe with one pipe, command two, pipe, command three. You know, if command one or two fails, then I also want it to fail. Um, and then it calls the main function, and then the load libraries function, then source, and then hello from green. This is also, you know, really, really useful. And the bigger the program, the more useful this becomes. Bash dash x. Um, let's say, uh, you can also set this in the preamble of your script. So, so, um, so here, up here, I can also set uh, x trace. And then, then I don't need to pass uh, write bash dash x before starting the program, I can just do that and I get the same thing. Um, I prefer not to define this in the file itself and then, you know, because I don't always, I don't want it to be enabled all the time. Normally I want this quiet, nice, clean operation of the command, uh, you know, no, good, no news is good news, that kind of thing. So it's only when I want it, need it, I call it like that. But uh, it's good to know that you can enable it programmatically, and this is the way you do it. Um, then there is a really neat trick. It's called P4, so that's a special variable. So you might have known, uh, you know, a counter, especially if you use bash as a shell, you have, um, you know, uh, PS1, um, and you have PS2. And so, you, you know, if I want my prompt to be, um, you know, uh, username at host name and then a dollar sign, in a space, I do that, and then now my prompt is like this, you know. So there's a PS1 is a special, whoop, is a special variable, and there is another special variable, and that's P4. And if you set that one to this long line, so let's do that. I will I prepare this in uh, in blue sh. Here we go. So if if you export that, you get um, the file name, the line number, the function name. And then you get some other things that we'll talk about in a moment. So if I now run bash dash x blue sh, you can see, I can see, I can now see which uh, file and what function and what line number uh, has different statements. And this really is really, really useful when you, your command, you have several functions and several files. Like by default, remember, you only have that plus notation. Like this here is the default, the plus, 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 plus main. Uh, I don't know in which file, I don't know what line number. And then I set the PS4 variable and all of a sudden I get full full context. And what's more, my editor, I can just click it, you know, and I can step through my program. And here I go into a different file even, lib green sh. And, uh, and then I jump into lib orange. And that's where it prints out hello from orange. And of course, the reason why that works again, this is another tip, is rather than to say, uh, you know, to, to write the string hello from orange, because that's the function name, you can also, you just, you have a func name array, which has all the, all the functions in the call stack. And so func name index zero, that's the current function. So that's why it prints out hello, hello from orange down here. Okay, so bash dash x and setting the PS4 variable, you know, those two, if you only get, you know, two things out of this talk, this is what to remember. It's very, very useful. And as your program grows, this is, you know, really, really valuable. Next is a bash debugger. There is such a thing as a bash debugger. Um, not everyone knows this, or few people know this. I don't know what percentage, but most people I t uh, tell, tell about a bash debugger, they've never used one. Never, never heard of it. So bash db. So you can, let's say, so you invoke it like this, bash db, and then you program. Um, and this, you know, is a lot like gdb if you use that. So I can do uh, next, 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 and then there's a function here called main, 
then I can step into it with S and then next and next and then I can evaluate things um, yeah step into that one next and so, and so on so very very cool um, and when you get to the end you can restart the whole thing with capital R and you, you, yeah you can do you know go, go again you know really really cool and you know as you can see here it also shows the context the full path to the file and the line number as well so so just what you got with the PS4 variable I showed you earlier. Now, most people like to do this from their editor. So, and I, I do do so too. So, um, here I have Emacs and I can do uh, real good spash db. And, um, and then I get a buffer with, uh, with what you just saw in the shell. Um, but I also get the you know the file open in Emacs and you can see it's put into read-only mode here so I can just hit uh, one letter shortcuts like N for next um, now it jumps to the, the buffer itself I don't know why it does that so I'll go back into to the shell buffer um, you can yeah, create a, a breakpoint with B and, and so on so yeah very nice um, it's also possible to evaluate things so I don't know if I showed that earlier. Let's see if we go somewhere where there's something worth printing out. Let's see if I step uh, into that one. Let's see, there must be a variable somewhere. Yeah, here we go. So here there's a variable, uh, a pet variable. So I can evaluate that with the eval, then echo pet, right? And I get this here is the pet process ID of the bash process running the program um, but in the shell buffer and this is where it becomes nice to be in the shell buffer you could then have done that uh, you know I can mark uh, a piece of code and I can hit A to evaluate it and, um, and then it evaluates that to source and that's and it does that and not hello from orange because it's running in the debugger so this is a yeah, not optimal example but you get the idea there are plugins for IntelliJ and for Visual Studio Code, now Visual Code as well, so um, you can use that. I, I have put in links in the in the in the slides. Uh, then lastly, there's Shell Check. I talked about Shell Check before. Uh, it's a it's a linter, uh, but you can also spot a lot of bugs in your code. So I completely recommend it running it at the very least from the command line, but integrating your editor as well. It will save you. Um, a lot of headaches and uh, it's, it really can spot bugs in your in your shell code. So I'll just give you a, s a simple example. Um, let's see, let's see here if I do, you know, ten equals one. You know that will <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Any you know will never make any sense, and it will tell me as well. You know this expression is constant. You know have you forgotten to put in a variable in here somewhere? So check it out. So that's what I want to tell you today about debugging in with Bash. Uh, use Xtrace, um, Bash-X, PS4 to set to get more uh, more details in the output from Bash-X. And there's a Bash debugger which is reasonably good. And then shell check, and then you know, uh, be friends with the editor. It can really help you a lot writing these programs. Um, there's a good manual page and, and uh, for for Bash that has a lot a lot of information. Um, every time I read through it, I I discover something new. So it's uh, it's uh, it pays off to read through. Um, and there's also documentation on the Bash table. Uh, it's it's easy enough to get started if you just get it installed. Um, you can uh, run with it. So that's it. Uh, thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.